Okay. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about my experience with dance and the brain. That is myself uh, and the man you see uh, on my side. It was my history of science professor at University of Florence in Italy. He was reading some excerpt from uh, Darwin writings and I was performing as the missing link be between humans and animals. Uh, so I was like enacting a monkey in that case. Um, I have been dancing since I was a child and then my whole family is involved in the sciences and um, particularly my mom, she's a physicist. So they advised me, they, <laughs> um, or they played an influence with me so that I chose to study biology and particularly neuroscience because I was fascinated by the way I was processing movement in my own experience as a, as a little girl or a young teenager, learning choreographies all day, because that's what I love to do. And um, I got my bachelor and master degree in Italy, and then I came here for a PhD at the Graduate Center. I'm a PhD candidate, like Julie. Uh, and I, my interest is really the motor system. I studied three years and my focus was um, the effects of physical rehabilitation in Parkinson's disease. And in particular, its effects on the brain. After three years, I decided to take a leave and to put my degree on hold. And I spent the past two years uh, doing clinical work to become a dance movement therapist. So after two years, I got my clinical degree in dance movement therapy. And now I'm back to my program because to finish my PhD. And this time, what I really want to do is to go beyond the effect of physical activity in Parkinson's disease and try to look into the effect of dance in Parkinson's disease. So there, 15 years ago in Brooklyn, New York, um, Mark Morris, which uh, may, many of you may know, Mark Morris is a famous New York choreographer, uh, started a collaboration with a group called um, the Brooklyn Parkinson Group, a group of patients with Parkinson living in Brooklyn going to Mark Morris. Uh, in the past 15 years, this program had tremendous success and it's now in more than 20 countries all over the world. And they give offer dance classes to people, and this has had Mark Morris Dance Center at the Juilliard School uh, in many locations in New York. And programs are um, affordable. Um, if you know somebody that has Parkinson, I strongly recommend that. Um, Ted asked to be a little specific about what we study, and particularly where in the brain is what we study located. So typically, when we talk about Parkinson's disease, we talk about a region, region of the brain, which is called the basal ganglia. So the basal ganglia uh, is a very complex uh, system of nuclei inside the brain. So if you pretend now to, cro to cut the brain in half, you would see uh, something like that. So if you could only see the core of uh, the brain, you would see the basal ganglia. And what's the role of the basal ganglia? Why it's important in movement? Um, I think it's common knowledge. We all know that what moves our limbs are muscles. The, the, the muscles give, uh, take information from neurons. And then neurons are coordinating our movement in the brain. We all know we have a cortex. That's the most superficial layer of the brain. And we have something called motor cortex, which evidently is responsible for producing information about movement to perform. Now, the basal ganglia is not superficial. It's, an, it's a deep structure in the brain. Why is it involved in movement? Because there's a subcortical loop. Mean, what it means is that um, if you imagine the motor cortex to be above that pink structure, um, not just the, the motor cortex is planning movement and sending information to the body, but also there's a, there's a loop of information with the basal ganglia, so from the motor cortex through the basal ganglia and back. And this is because the, the way we move has a level of sophistication. So 
the basal ganglia can be responsible of facilitating movement or inhibiting movement.